So we're going to go over um, problem 40 here. We have y equals secant x tangent x, and they want me to graph it. So maybe the first thing I'll tell you guys is that you want to rewrite that if you can. Can you guys take that function and can we write it using sines and cosines instead? Let's do that. I mean, what does secant of x mean? Okay. What about tangent of x? It's sine of x over cosine of x. And so really, you know, when someone says, how do I graph it? I guess I would multiply those fractions together, and I'd say we have to do sine of x over cosine squared of x. That's what I have to graph. So I'll get out my graphing calculator. Of course, you know, we write the squared here, but that's not how you do it on a calculator. And it's not really how you think of it. If I get my calculator out and I say, hey, I'm going to graph, well, a bit of y equals, let me clear this stuff out. And what I want to graph is, I'll say, sine of x divided by, but what I want to really do here is square the cosine of x. So I'm going to open up parentheses. I'm going to write cosine of x. I'm going to close parentheses for the x. I'm going to close parentheses for the cosine. And then I'm going to put my caret 2 or my squared symbol. Now, actually, you guys are lucky. Some of you have a TI-83 that when you write cosine and square it, it writes it like this. The newer ones do that. I have an ancient one. But some of you have the ancient one, so I figure I'll show it. All right, so here I go. Enter. And so anyways, what's it ask me to do? Ask me to graph this thing? Let's see what the graph looks like. Ooh, how about that? One thing that's nice to do sometimes if you want to do these things, if you hit zoom, and if you choose choice 7, zoom trig, sometimes that helps the, uh, the window a little bit, because your window now will go from basically negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi. Okay. 3.14 times 2 is 6.28. Well, not quite. Pretty close to I should also check my mode. Am I in the right mode? Yeah, radius. Okay, so we're here. And basically, as I look at this graph, this is a nice problem. Why do we get asymptotes? Well, you get asymptotes because there's a den denominator, right? And are there values you could put in for x that would make the denominator zero without making the numerator zero? Okay, let's name some of those. So, you know, remember that on the unit circle, ah, here's one, 0, 1. That's a place where, I can't see that. Let me put that on the screen. That's a place where the cosine is 0. And another place, of course, is down here at 0, negative 1. So you have to think about what angle measurements would make the cosine of x I mean, that's the real question. What makes cosine x equals 0? Well, things like x equals pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, plus or minus these things, right? You could go back pi over 2, and that happens. So these are the places where we're going to have vertical asymptotes. You guys with me? And notice once again, the denominator is squared. And that's why when you look at the picture, each of the asymptotes, you really have a limit here of negative infinity or you have a limit here of positive infinity. As you approach, you know, if I trace, and if I start approaching the first asymptote, pi over 2, well, I start growing without bounds regardless which side you come from. If you're on the other side of pi over 2, same thing. I'm going to grow without bound as I move 